Hello and welcome to another TLDR video. This one's going to be about the reopening of Stormont, the devolved government in Northern Ireland. For three years, Stormont has been suspended following the renewable heat incentive scandal, which has casually been nicknamed the Cash for Ash scandal back in 2017. First though, if you've been meaning to pick up any of our Countries with Shoes pin badges, we're offering free shipping on all orders over £20 if you use the code free shipping. The deal ends soon and the link's down below. Okay, before we get into the scandal itself, a bit of background on how the Northern Irish Assembly works. The Assembly is in many ways incredibly delicate, because obviously in Northern Ireland there are two major factions, the Nationalists and the Unionists. In the most recent Northern Irish Assembly election in 2017, the vote share was pretty evenly split between the two sides, with the Unionist parties getting 41% of the first preference vote share, and the Nationalist parties who got 39.8% of the first preference vote share. We say first preference vote share because the Northern Irish Assembly elections use a preference vote system called single transferable vote, a form of proportional representation, which guarantees that both nationalists and unionists are fairly represented in the Assembly. Northern Irish MPs, known as Members of the Legislative Assembly, or MLAs, have to actually declare themselves as unionist, nationalist or other. Typically there's two Unionist parties, the Democratic Unionist Party and the Ulster Unionist Party, also known as the DUP and the UUP. There's also two Nationalist parties, Sinn Féin and the SDLP. And there's also one main unity party called Alliance, who declare themselves as other. In Northern Ireland, the government has to reflect the makeup of the Assembly, so even if the Unionists had a majority of the MLAs, they wouldn't be able to form a government alone. Back in 2016, when the Cash for Ash scandal first started kicking off, the leader of the DUP, Arlene Foster, was the first minister, as the DUP were the largest party, and Martin McGuinness, leader of Sinn Féin, was deputy first minister. So let's rewind and explain what the Cash for Ash scandal actually was. Well, in 2012, Arlene Foster was the minister of the Department of Enterprise, Trade and Investment, or DETI. DETI oversaw the implementation of the Renewable Heat Incentive Scheme, which offered financial incentives for businesses to switch to renewable energy sources, like biomass boilers or solar pumps. Basically, the maths in this incentive was all wrong, and people realised that the amount you earned from the subsidy was more than the cost of wood pellets used to power the biomass boilers. Because of this, there were reports of people heating empty farm sheds simply to get the subsidy. Basically, the government was paying people to heat unnecessary stuff. This made the scheme insanely expensive, as people realised you could make money simply by installing and using more boilers. Many special advisors were unbothered by the spiralling costs, because the bill was supposed to be footed by the UK Treasury. But when the Treasury saw quite how expensive it was, they told the Northern Irish Assembly that they would have to pay for any overspend. By the time the scheme was shut down in March 2016, £490 million had been wasted. The whole thing was made more suspicious by the fact that the UK had implemented an identical scheme years earlier, but had included cost controls. The Northern Irish law literally copied and pasted the UK's law, but missed out the 107 words that related to cost controls. Also, quite a few whistleblowers tried to tell the Northern Irish government about this issue as early as 2013, but they didn't seem to want to hear about it. Anyway, when it all came to light in 2016, Arlene Foster had risen to First Minister. It was such a massive scandal and such a massive waste of public money that there were calls for her to resign. She refused to do so and instead gave an emergency statement to the Assembly. However, the statement had not been approved by Martin McGuinness, the leader of Sinn Féin, as was required by the Northern Irish power-sharing rules. Members of the Legislative Assembly realised this and tried to raise points of order with the Speaker, but the DUP Speaker, Robin Newton, refused to let them speak. At this point, even other Unionist parties were unhappy with Foster, but she still refused to step down. As a last resort, Martin McGuinness resigned on the 9th of January 2017, because the Northern Irish government requires a Sinn Féin deputy minister, the whole executive collapsed, and stayed collapsed until Saturday, when after three years of talks, the two parties finally came to an agreement. Under this new arrangement, Arlene Foster will return as First Minister, and Sinn Féin's deputy leader, Michelle O'Neill, will be the deputy speaker. So why, after three years, did they finally agree something now? Well, there are two main reasons. 
funding and elections. Firstly, the UK Treasury offered Northern Ireland some £2 billion in extra public service funding, on the condition that they could form a government by Monday. Also, if they failed to do so, the UK government told them that there'll be a new Northern Irish Assembly election. This scared Sinn Féin and the DUP into action, because they both suffered losses in the general election held last December. These losses were mainly to the Alliance Party, who won 17% of the vote, about twice what they got in 2017. The DUP's vote share dropped from 35% in 2017 to 30%, and Sinn Féin's vote share dropped from 30% to 23 Both were concerned that if another election were called, they'd lose the power they currently held in the situation. Anyway, the threat of an election seems to have worked. So what was the agreement? Well, the main thing is that Irish and Ulster Scots are now officially recognised as legally valid languages in Northern Ireland, and a new Executive Brexit subcommittee has been established to deal with any Brexit-induced sectarian tension. There's also a new party leaders forum who will meet at least once monthly. You can read the full 62-page document for more info, and it's linked down below if you're interested. We'll continue to watch the assembly as it gets back up and running, to see how the major parties are able to cooperate in their new relationship. If you're interested in how things will play out, then be sure to subscribe to the channel for more updates. And if you want to be notified every time we release a video, tap the bell icon too. And finally, if you want to see your name at the end of the videos just like these people, then sign up to our Patreon. There's a link to that down below.